Welcome to your 4 to 5. Eric Chilton here, Chad Silver, Tim Buckley, Lauren Coleman. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for watching us on News 2, Firestick Roku, and you know we're also on the News 2 app. And coming up this half hour, we're going to be talking about the holiday market, getting a preview of it. A lot of people go crazy over the holiday market. Really? I have never been. Me either. I love it. I actually do because the smells and the cinnamon and ah, apple and all that stuff. Really? It gets you in the holiday spirit for sure. Okay. Right? That's right. Absolutely. It'll be 80 degrees for the holiday <laughs> market. Yeah, it will. It's true. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Looking forward to that. But first, we want to get to some of your top headlines with your 4 to 5 roundup. Greensboro police arrested three women accused of fighting alongside students at Grimsley High School. Right now you're taking a look at the video of the fight. We blurred out some of the faces so we don't identify any of the students. Investigators say Laquita Sims, Tracy Sims and Demorche Sims came to the school yesterday encouraging this altercation. The adults are the mother, grandmother and aunt of a Grimsley student. Police say one of the women assaulted a teacher trying to break up the fight. They say that teacher is OK and no injuries were reported. Right now, the women are in jail under a $100,000 bond. They face several charges, including trespassing, assault and inciting a riot. Crime Stoppers is offering a $10,000 reward for information on an unsolved double homicide. Greensboro police say 22 year old Autumn Miller and 22 year old Gustav Brown were killed on Drawbridge Parkway in January. The families of the victims say they're searching for closure and hope someone comes forward. She will want justice. Um, there's no such thing as snitching. You know, um, she didn't definitely didn't deserve this. She was a kind person. And um, please, please, for her sake and for her son's sake, come forward. Um, truth, justice, and the American way. With no truth, we can't get justice. And if somebody doesn't come forward, still no justice. And we can't blame the system if the system doesn't work. If you know anything about the murder of Miller or Brown, give Crime Stoppers a call. Remember, every tip is anonymous. Time is running out. If you'd like to vote early, it ends tomorrow at 3. Voting early means you can vote at any precinct, but next Tuesday, Election Day, you can only go to your assigned location. On Election Day, polls will be open from 6.30 to 7.30. Midterm candidates are pulling out all the stops ahead of Tuesday's election here in North Carolina. The biggest matchup is the race to the U.S. Senate. Sherry Beasley and Ted Budd are vying for Richard Burr's vacant seat. They, along with candidates across the nation, are using the last few days to lock down support. It's looking like 2020 all over again as President Biden and former President Trump ramp up campaigning for midterm candidates. They're trying to suppress the right to vote and subvert entire elections. We will stop the crime wave in Democrat-run cities. We will give our police the power they need and the respect they deserve. With just four days to go, the candidates are cramming in events, especially in Pennsylvania, where that state's open Senate seat could help decide the balance of power in Washington. CBS News asked Democrat John Fetterman about voter concerns following its stroke in May. I would say we have shown more and shared more kinds of a medical evaluation more than virtually anyone unless you're, you're running for, for, for the president. Republican Dr. Mehmet Oz has focused his closing message on the economy and crime. We have families all over the Commonwealth worried about crime so much so they won't send their kids outside. With control of Congress at stake, more than 32 million Americans have voted early, either by mail or in person, according to the United States Election Project. Democrats are feeling very encouraged by that because, you know, the, the larger the turnout, the better it is for Democrats. Yeah. Republicans are touting increased diversity in their field of candidates, with 89 black, Latino, Native American, and Asian House candidates. A lot of significance about the Latino working class that is realigning like the white working class in this country and supporting more of a populist conservative message that they saw under Donald Trump. Analysts say it will all come down to voter turnout as the parties make their final pitches leading up to Tuesday. At his rally in Iowa Thursday, former President Trump hinted that he will very likely run again for president in 2024. We've got you covered on all things 2022 midterm elections. Just text the word vote to 336-379-5775 and we'll send you a link to our WFNY News 2 voter guide.
Greensboro's sixth annual Veterans Day Parade is tomorrow. We will thank our veterans with a celebration through downtown from noon to one. The route begins on North Elm near the Contour Building and ends in front of the Greensboro History Museum. The museum is even hosting visitors from 1.30 to 3.30 to check out the exhibits and history of Greensboro veterans from World War I to Desert Storm. This Sunday is the women's only 5K walk and run at the Cone Health Med Center for Women. It was postponed last month because of weather. Well, this year's event is the first in person since 2019. The fundraiser helps pay for breast cancer research and free mammograms. On-site registration starts at 11 a.m. The first race starts at 1. The 5K is at 3. And Tim, I'm not sure you could ask for better weather for an outdoor race in November. Uh, it'll be very warm, Chad, that's for sure. Maybe a little too warm for some folks, but this is what we're seeing right now. If you've been outside, you notice it doesn't feel like it has. Currently, our temperature is 74. This is in Winston-Salem. We even have a little humidity in the air that you might be noticing over the next couple of days. Temperatures across the state right now in the region, upper 70s, 77 for you in Lexington. Same thing for Pinehurst, 76 in Burlington, 73 in Greensboro. And as I was mentioning, haven't shown the dew points in a while, but they're creeping up. We have dew points near 60 degrees, which is pretty humid for November. Anyway, we're not used to it anymore, and you'll start to notice that we're having an east flow of wind, which means it comes from the ocean and moves across the state. So something we're already seeing way out east, east of 95, a couple of scattered showers moving around, and that's something I think that we will see this weekend. Let me walk you through Futurecast. I'm going to start it out at 5 in the morning tomorrow, and this is what our computer model thinks will happen. Notice how it's pretty cloudy for all of us early in the morning, but as the day goes along, this is around 11, more sunshine to the east, more cloud cover to the west, with a couple of scattered showers possible. This is around 2 and 3 in the afternoon, very warm, sunny east, cloudy to the west with those scattered showers. So that's kind of the way the day will shake out. Better chance for rain in the North Carolina mountains as well through the rest of the weekend. And Sunday is more of the same rain west, sun east, partly cloudy in between. So that's the way you should plan out both of your weekend days, depending on which county you live in in our area. Start you out with tomorrow again for Saturday morning. It should be pretty foggy early on, just like we saw for today to start out. And that fog could bring an isolated shower or two. We'll get very warm with a high of 76 for your Saturday. Thank you, Tim. Well, we know there are some great chefs at Triad restaurants, lots of them, but one in particular is getting a pretty big opportunity, and it's in television. I visited his restaurant, Seal and Sco, to see what's going on. Well, I have to tell you, when I heard that this was happening, I had to come in here. If you haven't been to Seal & Sco here in downtown Greensboro, you're missing out. Sean's the owner. How you doing, man? How's it going? This is great. All right, so you get to be on national TV testing your cooking skills. Tell me how this all came about. Um, they reached out to my wife via our Instagram account, Seal & Sco, and the casting director was saying they're doing a southern edition of Chopped and that they were interested. They had seen our work and heard about us and been on our page and saw some pictures and just got the ball moving from there. So tell me how it works. You and I were chatting a little bit. You really don't know what you're going to have to work with, right? Completely in the dark as far as the ingredients and the, what's going to be in the box. And that's, I think that's the draw why so many people watch this. The time really puts the pressure on, people, on chefs and then the ingredients coming out. It's no matter, no telling what they're going to. So you've got appetizer, entree, and dessert, and what's the time to put all that together? The appetizer round is 20 minutes, and then the entree and dessert are 30 minutes each. 30 minutes for an entree? Yeah. Because that's fast, right? That is extremely fast from start <laughs> to finish. That is. <laughs> What do you do to get psyched up, or how do you feel about it? Uh, I, I, I just hope that the ingredients speak to me. You know, like, um, it's one, I know they always throw a wrench in there and give you something oh, crazy. Oh, yeah, yep. But hopefully, you know, the other two is something I'm really familiar with that I can really, you know, jump on and find some creative uh, avenue to, to produce something really That's good. That's awesome, yeah. yeah. And he's Greensboro native, by the way, which is awesome here. All right, so you're heading out next week, and do we know when it's going to air yet? or? We don't know yet when it's going to air, All right, we'll be sure. We'll keep air. you posted on that one, dude. Congratulations, man. Thank this you so much. I appreciate it.
So the restaurant, if you haven't been, is phenomenal. I love it. And when I heard about this, I was really excited for them. Uh, the pictures on the wall behind him, Lauren mm -hmm. was noticing that. Those are his grandparents. And the name of the restaurant is Seal and Sco. And Seal is short for Lucille. Sco is short for Roscoe. And that was his grandparents' oh, name. Wow. So they were big on family meals and that type of thing. There's some Asian influence in the restaurant, uh, but it's also Southern food with a twist. Mm -hmm. um, he said this is a Southern series of the, okay. of the Chopped show on Food Network. This is awesome. I, I love Chopped. I'm a big fan. Food Network always plays marathons so you can watch it all day long but the most exciting thing about that show is they do get a basket of different items and it's cool to see the chefs pivot on their feet when something goes wrong yeah. or something that they might make where they had three hours to make like you said you had 30 minutes so it's just really cool to see them rise to the occasion I, watching those shows just make me hungry so like <laughs> I, I, I gotta watch it on a full stomach but it. yeah it's incredible what they're able to do uh -huh. with very limited things that they don't even know what they're going to be getting until they actually get he it. said or, that's the most nerve-wracking or thing. unconventional things they yes. might throw in some sardines and say we want you to make a sweet potato pie right. using these <laughs> and it's just great to see the science behind cooking because it truly is a science and see those guys get down and dirty. So and, I'm and looking forward to so watching So like you them. said, those ingredients, you'd be like, I don't know how to use that. Yes. Like or, turmeric or whatever. Or a fruit or vegetable they've never heard of from another country. Yes. So it's a cool show. And hopefully it'll, you know, be some good publicity for his restaurant. Yeah. Absolutely. And hopefully he might come back. Sometimes they have some chefs come back to the show. He's so. going next weekend, not this one, but next, I think it's uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is when mm -hmm. they're going to shoot it. So yeah. we'll keep you posted. Sounds good. Very cool. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. How often do you see one of those shopping carts just hanging out on the side of the road? Well, people in Greensboro can now report abandoned shopping carts. Call the number you see on your screen and the city will contact the appropriate store to come pick it up. This is actually kind of a process where the city is determining whether a city ordinance is appropriate to keep this thing going. As stores gear up for the holidays, so are shipping and postal companies. UPS is looking to hire 60,000 people. The service wants to hire more than 800 of those people right in our area. There are several career fairs tomorrow from 10 to 2. You can find more information on our website.
And even with inflation at a painful high, experts don't expect holiday spending to slow. The National Retail Federation forecasts retail sales this month and next to grow 6 to 8 percent over last year. Now those predicted gains are actually less than last year when sales grew more than 13 percent over 2020, shattering previous records. While the topic of inflation weighs heavy on most adults, some kids may not understand why their parents can no longer afford any of the frivolous items and purchases like toys and other knickknacks. A certified financial planner I spoke with developed a tool to help parents teach kids about finances. Greg Merced is the CEO of Busy Kid, an app that helps children gain hands on experience in managing money by motivating them to save, share and spend their allowance. As the father of six children, Merced says financial education starts at home. They're not going to learn this stuff in school, probably. Right. And even if they learn a little bit of it, they need the practice. And the practice happens at your house. Give your kids some chores to do. Let them earn some money um, and then let them manage that money with technology. Kids love technology. They're good at it. He encourages parents to be transparent with their children about today's economy. He says teaching kids about budgeting at an early age will help them understand the life choices they need to make now to have a stable lifestyle in the future. Instead of just like venting every time you pull into the gas station, Use this as an opportunity to start talking to them about stuff. Yeah, guys, it does cost a lot to fill up the car with gas, but you know what else? You know how much tires cost for this car that we're driving around or how, how much it costs to get the oil changed or insure this thing or register it? <laughs> so Busy Kid, the app provides parents with a chore chart where chores are preset by the age of the child. It also has features that allow children to invest in stocks and give back to charity. For details on that app, just look for the story on our website. Well, guys, I think that this is a great tool. Phenomenal. I wish I had something like this growing up because my parents didn't really talk to me and my sister about finances. They pretty much handled everything. And as I got older and started handling my own money, I'm interest. Right, What's this? Right, yeah. Oh, if I miss this payment, it's going to affect my credit in this way. And I think had I started talking about it at, he says kids as young as five can use this app, started talking about it early, I would be much more ahead when it comes to my savings and things of that nature. It's wonderful. Like when I see this, um, I mean, that's perfect. Yeah. For kids. My parents gave me a checking account when I was 12 years old and they said, now learn how to balance it and keep up with it and everything. So they taught me that helped me so much, mm -hmm. but investing is a whole different thing. Yeah. I didn't know anything about that. So on the app, it basically shows you certain stocks they can invest in, Apple and things of that nature. Awesome. So I think that's pretty cool. I think and I, I, it's possible that it was just my family, but I feel like talking about finances was almost kind of taboo. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like along with politics, right? Like you just don't really talk about it. And I think maybe that's just the way that I was raised, but I mean, we never really talked about finances. Mm -hmm. I never was able to ask who my parents voted for in the election. Like, really? That's just how it was. Yeah. Those were just not topics that we discussed. And I, I, when he said it's something that they're probably not going to learn in school, I feel like skills like this should be taught in school because you too. can actually apply this to your life and not saying calculus and chemistry and all those things aren't Which important, probably not but I don't use many of right. those things today, but these are lifestyle skills that you will use for the rest of your life. Perfect. I love it. I'm going to do that when I go home tonight. <laughs> Take a break. Get ready, kids. <laughs>
want to start off by letting you know about something really cool you can see in the sky this evening. I actually saw this last night when I was driving back from dinner, but a bright dot just to the next of the moon and it is Jupiter. That's what we're able to see so easily and tonight they will be much, much closer together than they have been. Here's where you want to be looking generally in the southeast sky anytime after sunset, but especially between about eight to nine o'clock. The moon will be big and bright, very easy to spot, and you'll see a bright white dot just above and just to the right. That is Jupiter very, very close to it this evening. Tomorrow it'll be a little bit farther away. This is what we walk, woke up to earlier today. All that fog it took a little while for it to burn off and go away. But with the humidity moving in, with the warmer air moving in, that is a recipe to create that condensation and make for those clouds on the ground. We're seeing also some scattered showers from that coming in from the ocean. They're not here locally, but we'll see some of those for tomorrow. The big story across the country is in the middle. Look at that cold air trying to come up right up against the hot air. 40s next to 80s. That's a pretty big front. They're having severe weather in that part of the country for today. We are fine for tomorrow. Clouds will be with us to start the morning. Could see a scattered shower mostly west of Greensboro throughout the day, but sunshine elsewhere. Sunday, similar story. A bit wetter out to the west, drier in most of the triad, and temperatures very warm both days. Here's your weekend flash points 76 both afternoons with that small chance of a shower. Yeah, my mom was like, mm. she'll say, you're really not. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Facebook, what's up? I really wish that, um, that, so one day we'll have to do this. When there's a hippo wandering around, we should like not have the camera on us and just the voice and Can pretend to the be voice? the voice of it. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Love to do it. Aren't if, their real names Ralph and something? What are their names? Isn't Fiona one of them? I don't know. I don't remember. What are y'all talking about? The hippos. Oh. Like I said, wouldn't it be oh, funny pretend if, to be the voice yes, of the hippos. Yes, uh -huh, while it's wandering around just doing stuff. I'm I think sure hungry We today. should zoom in on the people and then we'll give them like names and, and uh, yes. I love doing that. My Where wife and I do that at the airport. Um, it's, they must be, um, Avoiding uh, actually this. who knows. <laughs> who they knows might be that. inside. Well, no, it's nice and warm, so. Yeah, maybe they're sunbathing Stand somewhere. Stand around, Brad. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Brad, how much control do you have left to right? Oh, no, None. we can only zoom in and out, I guess. Oh, no. There's okay, a there's a little bit. Well, that's just because we're so zoomed in. Oh, oh, I got you. I see what it is now. That's about it. Wait, so you can do like a side by side? Ooh, ooh Brad, do like a. I want to see the, um, so the that up top camera and the hippo cam. So like when you scroll to one side, then all of a sudden there we are. Oh, there it is. I saw it. Yeah. Ooh. See the hippo. So if I get way up here. Wait, you're not up yet. You got to move. Move back. Um, back. To your left. Wait, now he's got this camera. Come over here. Now he's got this one. He's dan he's oh. a dance partner. <laughs> so gray. You're not Here's gray, that. you're seasoned. So, seasoned. Well, now that Halloween has come and gone, the holidays are officially underway and the holiday market at the Greensboro Coliseum kicked off today. Love this event. WFMY News 2's I, Janice McMiller has all the inside look on the fun. The most wonderful time of year is quickly approaching. Christmas is less than two months away. and It's not too early to start shopping for some of those holiday gifts. And you can do so here at the holiday market at the Greensboro Coliseum. They have everything you need. They even have things you can wear on your head, like these cool headbands, or you can get a nice Santa baby sweater. And that's not it. This is just one vendor. If you take a look down this road, there's tons of different booths set up. There's more than 300 vendors 
from all over that will be here at the Greensboro Coliseum. You can find items that you can decorate your home with these nice pillows, even some pretty unique carved out angels and Christmas trees and this holiday uh, extravaganza. This Christmas extravaganza is going to be going on all weekend here at the Greensboro Coliseum inside of their special event center. It opens up Friday today at 10 a.m. will run through Sunday. Tickets are only $9 for adults, $1 for kids, and if you're under six, you get in for free. For more details on this awesome holiday event, you can head to our website WFMYnews2.com. Oh, I love her hat. So cute. That is uh, <laughs> Christmas on steroids. Yes, it is. There. Wow. Oh, it's a light up. So it's it's everything. It's decorations. It's arts mm -hmm. and crafts. It's food and drink too. So I like it because of the smells. It's like uh -huh. the cider, cinnamon, and baked goods mm. kind of thing. So Tim said it's going to be close to 80 degrees, but in there it'll be 70. <laughs> so you're good. They're probably the air down to 60. That's right? yeah. That's what you should do. I love that everything is in one spot, so you can knock out your Christmas shopping or holiday decorations. My my mom likes to collect Santa Clauses, so we would always go to all these different stores so she could find a new Santa Claus. But I think a place like that, you could do it all in one. You could do it all in one. Does mm -hmm. she put them on display every year? She does. All I mean, there's probably 30 plus. Wow. There's so many. Some are really tall, some are little. Wow. That's like her thing. Um, does she? Is there like one specific thing that has to be? You know, worthy of of being purchased. Like, is, does every Santa have to have the sack or right? Yeah, like, I don't know. She just, I mean, they all look different. Okay, but you know, that's just her thing. <laughs> that's cool. That. All right, we're coming right back. We'll take a break, pay some bills. See you in a bit. Oh, Bill, I haven't got a big deal. Mic check. You got me on mic, right? Mic check, Jalen, one, two, three, four, five, six. How do I sound? <laughs> Out here talking about playoffs. The playoffs, as Jim Moore would say, starting tonight here at Northwest Guilford, GTCC game of the week, ready to go. You can hear me. No, I do not. It's actually pleasant. All I can hear is silence. Welcome back to the 4 to 5. Happy Friday, by the way. That's redundant. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's that Friday. Redundant. Always happy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. You can never not like Friday. Yeah, can never not like Friday. Unless Friday is your Monday. You know, we've got some people in the newsroom who work very, um, I don't want to say odd, but just different shifts, mm -hmm. right? Like, but if your day's off are Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. you probably don't and like Friday. Everybody else is so happy. <laughs> when, and you're like, when that is you, 
you really get irritated at everybody else. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, so Happy glad Friday. this is. Oh how wonderful! Week is over. Oh this is and so like, nice. This is my freaking Monday. <laughs> <laughs> like, enjoy right. your weekend. Right. <laughs> What's going on on Facebook? Oh, we've got some good stuff talking about today. Um, how often do you flip your mattress? Ooh. Never. Not that often. Not okay. often. Not as much as I probably should. Well, you know, Tanya, she always has some good advice. She's going to be joining us this half hour mm. to talk about flipping your mattress and when you should do it. Okay. But first today, we are talking about Friday football fever. This week's matchup is between Southeast Guilford and Northwest Guilford. This is the first round of playoffs, so the dueling teams both have a lot on the line. WFY News 2's Sean Higgins is live ahead of the game. Sean is getting down to the wire now. Yeah, and the infamous words of former coach Jim Mora, playoffs, they are here, they are now. We kicked off our coverage with our GTCC game of the week between Northwest Guilford and Southeast Guilford. Tonight is actually a rematch of a game that happened just a couple weeks ago. In that game, Northeast took over. They cruised to a 37-10 to victory over the Falcons. Viking senior running back Mike Gadet running for over 300 yards in that one. I spoke with Southeast head coach Earl Bates earlier today, and he said that the loss is still fresh in their players' minds, but that the team is focused on adjustments they need to make in order to beat Northwest. Our guys are very focused uh, right now just because of the opponent and, and the loss two weeks ago. That was a, that was a bad loss for us, uh, and our players didn't feel very good after that game. I think there's a... Uh, some need of going out to say that we're a better football team than we showed two weeks ago. And and, and they know exactly what they're up against. And, and we've looked at a lot of mistakes that we made, and we understand that we've got to improve on those mistakes. And that's the biggest challenge. There's going to be some battles within battles in the game tonight, and uh, we've got to win those battles to be successful. It is win or go home. That's how the playoffs work. And Coach Bass also told me that it's about mental toughness as much as it is physical toughness. You make too many mistakes and you are not playing next week. That game kicks off at 7, and I let both coaches know that if they need me, I'll be ready to play. Back to you guys. <laughs> Higgins. <laughs> Higgins all up in it there. I love it. All right, from high school to the pros, our WFMY News 2 Panthers trivia game. It's ending soon. We are your official home of the Carolina Panthers, and we have a special treat for fans looking to score some tickets. Right now, our website and our app is on our website in the app. Uh, you can get four trivia questions. You click it, sign in with your Facebook or email account, fill out some really basic information, and you have until 6 o'clock this evening to play. Then we'll randomly pick a winner who will get two tickets, and we'll announce it on WFMI News 2 at 11. All, all, you can play, by the way, as many times as you like, but act fast because you only have about two hours left for this. All right, so just to show how easy this is, we've got our own Jalen Gilkey with us hey. today as we take a crack at the Panthers trivia game. Yeah, guys, so we're going to do this game show style. There's okay. four questions. Each one of you will have the opportunity to answer a question. If we can get two of you to get the answers right, those <laughs> oh, two great. will that then go head to head for that fourth and final question. And the winner will be crowned the four to five Panthers okay. trivia champion. Remember, you cannot answer until I complete the entire question and all four answer choices. There is no prize. My budget is still kind of tight. <laughs> but we are competing for bragging rights. Chad. Okay, I'm ready. You're up first. I'm ready. Question, who was the first draft pick for the Panthers in franchise history. <laughs> A, Tyrone Poole, B, Kerry Collins, C, Blake Brockmeyer, or D, Frank Garcia? Gosh, I'm probably gonna have to go with, um, let me look here, uh, probably uh, Kerry Collins. Ding, 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 yep. ding, ding. All right. right. Hey. We okay. have one has advanced to the next round. All right, Lauren, nice. ladies. It's your turn. I knew that. All right. So who was I the did. last defensive player the Panthers selected in the first round of the NFL draft? Is it J.C. Horn? Is it Brian Burns? Derrick Brown? Or Shaq Thompson? Shaq Thompson? Unfortunately. Is it Derrick Brown? That's also wrong. J.C. <laughs> <laughs> Horn? There you go. Hey! <laughs> third time <laughs> charm. Third time charm, but I don't think you're going to move on. Y'all know sorry. this isn't my strong suit. It's all suit. good. They kind of set you up for... I'm going to let you, everybody know I didn't pick this question for you. Okay. Uh, okay, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Here's Steve Harvey. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Which head coach has the most Panthers playoff wins in franchise history? Is it Riverboat Ron Rivera? Is it John Fox? Is it George Seifert or Dom Capers? 
you know, my first initial reaction is going to be Riverboat Ron, but I'm just thinking here, looking back. You're running out of time. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Ron Rivera. Oh, unfortunately, oh, you is are it Donald wrong. Papers? No. It's actually John Fox. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, I would not. Rob Bear had that. seven, John Fox had okay, eight. Okay, Chad. Oh, yeah. man. So, sorry. Um, I don't know what we're going to do now, but. Final question. Final question, Chad. You are our grand champion. Okay, yes. Uh, we'll thank we'll you, crown thank you. you grand champion. Appreciate but it. Just to keep things going, we'll have you two answer the last okay. question. Is okay. that? Oh, All right. Man. All right. So, it's boom, boom, boom. What was the last team the Panthers beat in their last playoff win? Is it A, the Carolina, excuse me, is it the Arizona Cardinals, the Chicago Bears? The New York Giants or the Seattle Seahawks? The Giants. The last, what was it again? The last one they played? Uh, the last one they won. Their won. last playoff okay. win. Gosh, I can't remember back that far. <laughs> oh, uh, Cardinals. Ding, 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 okay. ding. Was that the ding. NFC Championship game? That it was. Wow, that well, was a that's long time cool. ago. Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, we got a bonus question because we got some more time. Well, she, so our producer just said, which Heisman Trophy winner plays for the Panthers? Plays or played? Played. Played, yeah. We only had one. Um, Cam, Cam Newton. Newton. There it is. Yep. That's it. Took me a second. That is nice. the Good. finale of our Panthers trivia game show. Chad, you are our grand champion. Thank you. You don't need any more nice. bragging rights, but here you are with more. Don't appreciate it. So it. Appreciate it. I, just want to say, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do at this Does point. Does he get a crown or something? You can work on it. We do right. have a crown and a sash. It's in the back. Okay. I'll get it. So awesome. no worries. You have to wear it for the rest of the day. It's on back order, you know. <laughs> Supply chain. Supply chain. That's right. 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 There we go. Okay, well, we have just given you the answer, so now you don't have any excuse not to play. You can play as many times as you like before the contest ends at 6 p.m. And since we're all in on football, tomorrow you can catch the best yes. and biggest football game in college football right here on WFMY, Dudley High School alum and Heisman Trophy frontrunner Hendon Hooker and the number one ranked team in the country. The Tennessee Volunteers make the trip to Athens to take on the number three ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Both teams come into this one undefeated on the year and the winner will take over the top spot in the SEC's Eastern Division with just three games left on the 2022 season. Kickoff at Sanford Stadium is set for 3.30 p.m. All right, let's get to your four to five roundup now. First up today, the Greensboro Police Department just received a $2 million grant to prevent violent crime. The program will bring together people from the community, researchers, and law enforcement to find solutions. So yes, this is definitely moving forward. Nothing but the, um, the best. It's, it's elevating a program that works great because the community is tired of waiting for these resources that never come. And this is really Chief James' vision and taking the, the bull by the horns and really moving forward the systemic issues that we find are contributing to crime in our communities. Some of the partners include North Carolina A&T and UNC Greensboro. Early voting is underway with just four days until Election Day. Right now, you can vote at any precinct, but that ends tomorrow at 3 p.m. After that, you'll have to vote at your assigned precinct on November 5th. Polls open at 6.30 a.m. and close at 7.30 p.m. And we've got you covered heading into Election Day. Just text the word VOTE to 336-379-5775 and we'll send you the link to our WFNY News 2 Voter Guide. And big news in the NASCAR world, all-star Jimmy Johnson and the King Richard Petty are teaming up. Johnson announced today he's taking on a part-time owner role as Petty GMS. He also says he's coming out to retirement to participate in the Select Cup Series races next season, with one of them being the 2023 Daytona 500. So I think I figured out what happened with our weather. This year, October, was November. So November is going to be October. We're kind of switching things around. Remember, it was pretty cool most of the month of October. Now we're going back to the warmer side of things. It seems leaves are falling off the trees and it's 77 degrees. That's your current temperature and high point. We have low to mid and even upper 70s across all of the area right now. The North Carolina mountains as well are in the 60s. Looking at the humidity, I haven't shown this for a while because there hasn't been any, but we are seeing dew points creeping up to right around 60 yet again, which means it might start to feel a little sticky over the course of this weekend. No weather problems for tonight, though. Of course, we have those playoff games, as Sean was telling you about Southeast taking on Northwest Guilford. All systems go for a really nice evening. 
You might not even need a light jacket. A long sleeve shirt should probably be just fine for you. Uh, we do have a couple of scattered showers in eastern North Carolina. They're not going to get here. The only reason I show you that is to give you a preview of what we could see tomorrow. When you wake up in the morning, there is fog. There are low clouds and there might be a scattered shower throughout the day. We'll start to see sunshine wind in the triad, but to the west, it'll stay pretty cloudy with a couple stray showers. That's the case for Saturday. Also the case for Sunday. So take a look at your planner. The morning has a better chance of clouds or a sprinkle and some fog. The afternoon, better chance of some sunshine. Looking ahead to the forecast, we do set those clocks back this weekend. Darn it. 79 on Monday. And then after that, it really gets cooler with a better chance for rain, especially by Thursday into Friday. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. Do I not bless you with a room that smells like pancakes and you're going to get me with the Christmas music? <laughs> I can't wait for um, Winterfest. really the OG. It is fall back weekend and when you wake up on Sunday morning, your phone will be the right time, but chances are you're going to have to change the clock when it comes to your microwave and your oven. Oh, and do not forget the clock in your car. That's always the hardest to set, isn't it? This post from Real Simple caught my attention. It's the seven things you should do around your home during the weekend of daylight saving time from checking your fire alarms and carbon monoxide detectors, flipping your mattress, cleaning your coffee machine, changing filters. You get the gist. All the things Things that you should be doing between like once and three times a year, right? Well, the discussion in our newsroom then became centered all around the mattress. Do you flip it or do you rotate it? So uh, mine, I can't because I've got a pillow top. Okay, that's me. So Same you thing. can't you can't flip it. Same. So we'd have to rotate, right? But yeah. do you? No, I do no. it. No. <laughs> I so do what does that do? Well, here's the thing. There's actually a real answer is what you should do, whether you should flip it okay. or rotate it and why you should do it. So let's take a look at this. Amerisleep.com says modern day beds include specific layers customized with the purpose, like what you said. The top layers provide cushioning. The firm base enhances durability. If you flip these new mattresses, the layers can't serve the purpose well, and it actually causes damage to your mattress. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a double-sided mattress, 
This is the one that you can flip and rotate. Some double sided mattresses include a degree of firmness. So back in the day, you would flip your mattress all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and this is to prolong the life of your mattress because okay. you're sleeping in the same spot every single right, time, right? right? But new technology like the new mattresses, they are only rotated, not flipped. Mm. I do that too, and I, sometimes I'll look, like I'll get really low and see if there's <laughs> like an indent tape. I did, tape. Yep. yes. And, and oftentimes there is, so I I don't have time to around. examine my mattress, but You I might should. sleep better. Yeah, I probably should. I mean, I know you should, because you could get that dip on one end yeah. and not on the other. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Hmm. Plus, you know, you're heavier on one side, like top-wise, bottom-wise, you know. Yep. I mean, we don't What if you have a water bed? Well, I don't think you yeah, flip, flip or do rotate that. anything. Do people still have water know. beds? Uh, is that still a thing? I know. I don't know. <laughs> Those were wild. Back in the day. Oh, I, I remember thinking day. it was really cool back in the day. And then now, <laughs> and then you get no a, way. And then you get a leak in that sucker. Yeah. Oh, and no. there would be a problem. <laughs> so if you're wondering what kind of mattress yours is, because you're like, well, I don't know. Do I have a double-sided mattress or do I have a new kind of mattress? Or a water bed. <laughs> or a water bed. Here we go. It says you should not flip any mattress unless it is specifically marketed as a double-sided mattress and here's where the clarification comes memory foam latex hybrid pillow top or euro top mattresses are just one-sided i'm going to put the water bed in there as well do not Don't flip oh the God. water bed okay you have another building okay oh my goodness so uh bobby odom said on um, facebook he has a memory foam mattress so i'm not really sure how those work That's memory, so you do not flip it don't you flip it okay and see bobby odom was able to give us this message and i was able to say it because he joined our fortified facebook group in our facebook club you see it right there go search for it you will become an exclusive member and then you can talk to us throughout the show every single day we'll be right back
Earlier today, you couldn't see in front of your face outside. We had that very thick fog. The clouds were very thick across the area. Looked like this on our sky camera in downtown Greensboro. And then it lifted. It took a little while until about 10 or even 11 o'clock. That'll be a similar story tomorrow morning. What we have going on and the reason that forms in the first place is moisture moving across the state of North Carolina coming in from the ocean. So overnight tonight that humidity will be there yet again and I think we'll see that fog developing once more. Very strong cold front in the middle of the country. It's 43 in Oklahoma City, upper 70s just to the east of there. They are having severe weather from that. We will not be participating. We're going to be on the clear, clear and easy side of that front. So for tomorrow, all we need to worry about are some low clouds for the morning. Throughout the day, there could be a scattered shower, but it's a mostly western triad, western Piedmont chance as you go toward Yadkin County, Surrey and Wilkes counties and the like. Same idea for Sunday. Both days are very warm and even a little humid. Here's a look at Futurecast. This is tomorrow morning looking at 11 o'clock right there. This is the afternoon. Notice how it's mostly sunshine east of Greensboro. More clouds or a shower to the west. We go through the end of your Saturday. Rain potential really is there for Saturday night and early Sunday morning. And then throughout the day on Sunday, it's the same kind of thing with showers off to the west, drier to the east, and we will stay warm every single day. So for tomorrow, mid 60s in the morning, Morning. Fog is there, maybe a shower, then drying out throughout the day in the mid 70s, and both days will be just as warm. 76 as the leaves are falling down on us in the weather garden here. Very warm weather both of those days. Big college football matchup this weekend. We got Wake taking on the pack in Raleigh. Perfect weather for that. Temperatures will be right around 70 degrees. You know, North Carolina, no stranger to vineyards. In fact, in our state, we have over 500 vineyards, and that means big business, of course. But experts say climate change could be a threat to the industry worldwide. Celebrating a successful wine harvest is a centuries-old tradition. But these days, winemakers are struggling with the impact of a warmer climate. Rising temperatures around the world mean grapes are maturing faster than ever before, leading to higher alcohol levels and weaker colors and aromas. This is our vineyard, Feyorigo, that we have planted to fight against the problems of global warming. This Spanish vineyard went from planting straight rows to curvy ones. It helps water stay put when rain doesn't come often enough. A group of scientists in the region is taking it a step further, opening a vine and wine research institute to identify the grape types most resistant to climate change. Experts are extracting DNA from crushed vine leaves to determine the vines best equipped to handle changing weather conditions. Looking for those traits, those differential traits that can make the, the vines to be better adapted to, to environmental conditions. Researchers say vines 35 years and older seem to cope better with climate change because they're more genetically diverse. Scientists say the goal is to help growers plant climate resilient vines that help climate proof wine for centuries to come. It's incredible to me that that the region can determine a type of wine yeah. or like a flavor Absolutely of wine. Does. I mean, I just I, I, I don't really understand it. Same. So the, the, I know the sweeter wines are North Carolina wines. The ones that are sweeter, whether it's a port or something like that, is yeah. a lot better here. It's mm -hmm. tough to do good and darker reds and stuff mm. in North Carolina. But it's interesting if, if climate change, if that's going up and everything's getting warmer, it's going to change what you can grow. It could change things. Yeah, the, I, one of the wineries I went to in Yadkin County, I think it's called Raffaldini. Uh, yep. Their family's Italian. They like the Italian wines and they said they picked our part of the U.S. because it was the same latitude uh, as Italy. Uh, and so the same type of grapes that you could grow in that part of Italy, they could grow there. And they have some good ones. Um, one thing is interesting too, sometimes the drought can actually make the flavor of the wine better. Oh. That's what California said when they had the really bad drought, the wine was like really good. Huh. I didn't so know that. I don't so understand there's benefits a lot of it, to, to be honest drought. with you. Mm. I don't either. We just work here. Just right, don't, yeah. just don't listen to us. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back.
Microphone check. I'm Avery. Hey, hello. Cheers. One, two, three. It, it is. It looks like drought, but it's. Oh, mic check. One, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one. What? Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. What? Oh, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check. Mic. Oh, I don't. Mike Chick, uh, I've decided to retire after that amazing catch in the 430s, so no more, uh, no more balls in the air for me, just straight lives and, and interviews. Hello? It's time for my two cents. So I have to talk to you about a really rough day I had recently. I posted this on Facebook. Some of you may have seen it. It's the bottle of Motrin, the empty bottle, because I had two sick kids and a wife that had to have, have some outpatient surgery. It was a rough day on Wednesday. I had the day off of work. Let me give you the rundown. So woke up that morning, had to get, uh, make sure Leslie, my wife, was ready to go, and my youngest daughter, Drew. So we take Drew to school, then Leslie to the surgery center. Now remember, Tyler is still home in bed sick. So I had to come back after dropping my wife off for surgery, make sure Tyler had lunch and he's okay, his fever was down, Motrin to the rescue, go back, get my wife, outpatient stuff, get her home with the medications, get her settled in bed. Then my daughter Drew comes home, fever of 102 degrees. Here we go again, more Motrin for her, get her settled, then get some dinner together. Uh, everybody ate, made sure the kids got down, made sure my wife was okay. And then I slept in the guest bedroom with Drew because she was sick and she was up coughing all night long. That was my day. So I posted that on Facebook. Man, were you people super sweet. There was all kinds of well wishes and praying hands and prayers for you, good dad, you know, all those comments. And I just wanted to tell you that I, I just thought to myself, they're just little comments, right? But when you start reading through, it actually did help. It made it so much better and the next day got even easier. And by the way, both kids were back at school today. My wife is up and around all is well. I'm going to probably go stay at a hotel this weekend. But that's just my two cents. That's your four to five. WFMY News 2 at five starts now.